This story is about exploring the secrets that lurk beneath the surface. We spoke with geologists about what it's like to search for silver, and they shared their passions with us. We begin with James Moores, a geologist specializing in exploration. The weathered surface is, is very good to, to look at first before you take out your hammer and start uh, breaking bits off because the, the weathered surface brings out a lot of the texture and a lot of the, the mineralogy. You can, you can tell by the different rates at which minerals weather. You're looking for some, some indicator minerals that they themselves don't contain silver, but they are associated with silver deposits. You're looking for the smoke surrounding the fire. Geologists generally don't see the rock. They see the magma. They see the sediment. I'm trying to see what happened, when it happened, relative to other events in the rock. And uh, from a prospecting point of view, whether any of those events had an economic, uh, economic uh, bent to them. Whether it's gold You're truly a detective. Gold. You're looking for the clues that would lead you to a new silver ore body. You've applied all your techniques of chemistry and, and, and physical methods. The only way to really prove whether there's something there is to bring in the diamond drill, or as we call it, the truth machine. It's certainly a commonly used expression now because the diamond drill will drill down and you'll see if you think what you think is there is really there. All these ideas you've had on what may be occurring in depth, this is the opportunity to test that out. Diamond drilling is really what we call a core drill. So we're actually using a, a cylinder with, uh, with, at the end of the cylinder is impregnated with industrial grade diamonds. And the diamonds are there to cut the rock and allow the, the rock, the cylinder of rock, to be able to come up inside the core tube. The outer tube, that's not retrieved actually, it goes down into the earth and a center tube is pulled out. That way you do not have to keep pulling out all of these every time. If you're 300 feet down, that's very time consuming. With the drill itself, there's a big chuck on it, which is like a vise. It closes on the drill and it pulls it up, and then it's held by another vise, slides back down and pulls it up again. And that's then screwed into a whole series of pipes. And as you drill through the rock, the core then feeds into those pipes. And after you've usually drilled something in the order of 10 feet uh, or three meters, you'll then pull that rod up with the core in it. Which way do I drill? Say uh, you can't see the sides here, all we know is we have the surface of the earth. We've done some mapping, we've done some sampling. Say I'm interested in the, the dark chocolate here. Say that's our, our perspective geology. We always have a target. And you know, what we're drilling for are veins. So the veins are, are dipping at a certain angle in, in the earth. It's not just going to be underneath, as a, say, as a table. So optimally, you're trying to drill down. So you drill through this body at right angles so you get a true thickness of it. And this is done with surveying. We use professional surveyors that will go and they will, they will angle the drill. And from the surface you can generally go up to about 45 degrees, between 45 degrees and 90 degrees. You're trying to build a three-dimensional picture of what that vein is doing with inside the earth uh, anywhere from 100 to say 500 meters below the surface. The Thickness is absolutely critical. If you have something that's only two centimeters thick, well, it'll probably never be a mine. So once you've decided to start the drilling uh, process, things ramp up uh, very quickly. Uh, there's lots of personnel involved, lots of equipment. It's very noisy, fairly dirty, hard work. The rigs are turning 24 hours a day, so Obviously, part of the time that they're working is going to be in the middle of the night. They don't even stop for lunch. The drill will always run. It's a large diesel engine. 
you always smell the diesel fumes a bit. They'll start revving it up just like a motorcycle and it'll get louder and louder. As with many mechanical components, you, you do have engines blowing up. Because the, there's a transmission, a four-speed transmission just like in a car, and the driller is actually shifting up. When he's further up in the hole and he's got lots of power, he can gear up into fourth gear and run the drill quite quickly so it drills faster. As you get further down, the, depending on the drill, it may not have the power to turn in fourth gear anymore. The driller is sitting there and he's daydreaming and all of a sudden he hears the sound because the, the, the motor is about to blow up because it's overheating because it's not spinning. It depends a lot on the rocks. If there's a lot of little faults and fractures in the rocks, they'll, as the drill goes through, they'll tighten up on the rods. Sometimes you'll get open spaces where the rocks have been shifting. When we hit one of those in our, in our diamond drill uh, rods, when they hit that, it causes a lot of problems. While you're drilling, you're pumping water down, down the, the pipes. Essentially, they're going down and then going around the core and then out to wash away the cuttings and uh, to cool a bit. What happens when you hit some of these fissures, the water goes into the cracks and it's gone, and it's not going back and forth, so all of a sudden you have a dry hole. Again, now what will happen is your bit will just burn, and just burn right up because it's not being lubricated. So you've got to pull all the rods up, replace the bit, put them all back down so you don't get, get production. And production is the key thing. The costs go way up uh, if, you, if you slow down. As the drill progresses down through the rock, there's a natural tendency for it to, for the drill stem not to go completely straight. Because of how a drill bit and stem, drill stem, turn, uh, you actually end up with a corkscrew going down. And, and the deeper you go, and, and, and it also depends on the kind of rocks you're going through, that, that uh, rod system will, will deviate. The smaller the rods, the more likely they are to bend. They all deflect to a certain extent. Even a piece of a branch. A branch, if you push it up against something, it's going to curve like that. So you think of this long uh, cylinder of all these hollow tubes. There's only that little piece at the, and down at the depth that we are actually filled with rock. The rest is still hollow. You say we're trying to hit this point, but we're not, and we're not making it. We have to try and get there, because that's where our, our evidence has proven that there's a, a body of silver. So what you have to do is you do what are called downhole surveys, where an instrument is, is sent down the hole and allowed to go past the end of the, uh, the drill rods, those are pulled up a little bit so you don't have any magnetic effect from the rods. It takes a compass reading and a dip angle. So we will come to here and then we will put a little triangle piece. It's a, it sounds a little simple, but it's like a block. And that little, we'll have a little deviation like that. So it'll hit that triangle and come down a little bit. And it'll go down and then if it still not doesn't look like it's getting down to our area, We'll put in another wedge in there and to, to eventually, we have to keep going down and surveying, checking where it went to. But it, we can do it slowly to get to our area. Once up on surface, the drill helper would be taking the rock out of the tube and basically laying it out in the box from top to bottom. Obviously, from our point of view, that's the most critical part. That's, that's what we're spending all this money to get, this 10-foot chunk of rock. Then they cut the rock in half, so you get a very nice, smooth surface. It's very easy to look at the geology. Half goes to the laboratory for chemical analysis, half stays as a, as a witness. Although it looks fairly dull, you can see where the geologist has marked uh, certain features with certain different colored crayons. Water is a great uh, tool, it really brings out the some more of the features and textures of the, of the rock. Many times what we want from a core is all the angles because we're trying to predict if we found silver in one place, where is the next place it will project to. When you actually do hit something, uh, it's very exciting. It, it's, uh, it's very rewarding. It's like a treasure hunt. Every day you're out there looking for a treasure. There's nothing, nothing beats it. It, it is so exciting. Um, to see it just coming out of the core barrel, um, you get a real thrill. And you can actually see that mineral, and, and this happens in, in a couple of our mines where we actually know when, when we pull out the little cylinders of rock and the cores that we can see, hey, this one, ha this has silver, Eureka.